It is true. Yeah. We're born into this world with a purpose. We're born into this world with a unique purpose. We are a unique person. We never exist yeah. again. We'll never exist again. And we're taking on all these external influences from parents, peers, yeah. siblings, all this sort of stuff. And what happens yeah. over time, it comes in and we adopt it as our own belief system. Yeah. Truth of the matter is that later on in life, you realize that you've been living your life according to somebody else's rules, living their life experience, but in your skin. Exactly. Which doesn't figure, does it? Any which way you look at it. Hi everybody, it's Robert here again from robertcbrown.online and welcome to another Coffee with Robert. Um, I've got a really, really great guest with me and I know I'm going to screw up his surname, so I'm going to let him tell you what that is. It's Robbie. <laughs> Von Wout. Thank Von you. Von Wout. I'm, I'm really glad he said that and not me because um, our friendship might have been very short-lived uh, if I mispronounced his name. I don't, know, don't, don't worry, I'm used to it. Yeah. <laughs> see, I've got a really easy name. Nobody gets brown wrong. You see, it's it's kind of easy. So, I should uh, thank the lucky stars for yeah. my name. Really, listen, Rob, Robbie. Um, we're becoming great friends. We've not known each other very, very long, but we've got an awful lot of synergy between us. Um, we believe in a lot of the same stuff. Um, we love to empower people. We love to give people tools to go out and create better lives, better businesses for themselves, and just live on purpose. And uh, Robbie is a personal development consultant and he's got a lot of passion for this stuff. And it's not often that I run into people that, that I feel I've got a, a real, a passion that's kind of a level in my own. And that sounds very conceited, but I mean, I'm, I'm actually absolutely infused with every day. Every day for me is personal development day. From the minute I get up to the moment I go to sleep, I'm thinking it, eating it, you know, it's just ridiculous. And Robbie's one of those guys too. So um, he's got a really, really interesting story. He's going to tell you where he's been, how he got to where he is now, and what he's actually doing now, because that might obviously be of interest to you as well. So with all of that out of the way, uh, oh, quickly before we uh, move on to that, do hang on as well, because if you're um, interested in what Robbie's got to say, or interested in anything that I say, we're going to be giving the re relevant links later on so that you can make contact with either or both of us as well to pursue that a little bit further so with now with all of that out of the way i'm going to hand over to robbie let him take the reins take it away robbie cool where did you want me to start like right from when i left school or further down no uh, i mean you can start where you i'll tell you what just feel it don't think it mate feel it don't think it start where you think you need yeah yeah, yeah. I'd, well, after, when I left school, after I left school, I did an apprenticeship. I was in, then once I finished my apprenticeship, I um, joined the army. It was 12 years in the army, and um, as I was getting through the army, I was looking, or getting a bit older, I was thinking, oh, well, what am I going to do when I when I leave? Or um, if I stay too long in the army, I'm, I'm not going to be able to find a job. So I thought, and... I was getting to a stage where I made it to sergeant and I was looking around and I saw um, a lot of the people that were still there were hanging on to do their 20 years. So they weren't really liking it in, in the army anymore. So they were just... Oops. All right, Robbie, you're back. There. That's okay. No, no worries. No worries. Glad to have you back. Yeah. What, uh, do you want to start that again? Yeah. I'll, I'll kind of edit it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Yeah. Start wherever you like. Tell us your story. Yeah. Well, so yeah, when I left the army, I thought, you know, I was thinking about leaving the army. I thought, what do I do now? Um, I was thinking engineering is probably not the best because it's not good for your, um, you know, because you breathe fumes and it's not good for your hearing because of all the noise. So I then got into pizzas. Um, and I can sum up my pizza business at, um, I lived for seven years on my savings and worked for the franchise for nothing. Um, that's, that's basically sums it up because I invested 150K into the business. Um, I was in there for seven years. I was taking about 20 grand a year out, which is 140. And when I left, I left with about 10 grand. Um, 
we had some, it went all right for a while. Um, then a major competitor come into the market and our sales, well, we were doing 9.95 pizzas and it went down to 4.95. Um, there was a lot more competition. And as a franchisee, I just didn't have deep enough pockets. Mm -hmm. So I, at that stage, well, while I was doing my pizza business, I come across books like Think and Grow Rich. So um, read those and then um, Cash Flow Quadrants. Um, they were quite interesting. But leaving leaving the pizza industry uh, business with um, you know not much in your pocket, I I sort of looked at it, and my objective was I know I, I knew we were going I was going to have to pull out, but I didn't want to pull out in debt. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, talked to my accountant and pulled the pin at the right time. So walked away with about 10 grand. I then went and lived with my sister for a couple of years and then went back to engineering because that's what I knew. Um, and saved hard. Um, I then got into doing property um, and did some property seminar, went to some property seminars and got educated on doing property. Um, bought a few, did them up, and then bought one that was, um, I changed from going to the low end of the market to going to a more high end, and then that property didn't sell, I've actually still got that property, it's rented out at the moment. Um, I was still engineer. I, I had a break from engineering at one stage because I thought I'll just go into the property. Um, and in the property business, I then got into, um, well, went to seminars and ended up going to a pitch fest. I don't, I'm not sure whether you know what the, what, what the pitch fests are, where you get you go to a two day weekend and you have a speaker that talks for about an hour and a half. They give you value for about three quarters of an hour and then pitch their product for the next three quarters of an hour. Um, I bought a few of those that were, um, maybe they were lemons, maybe it was just me not ready for them. Um, um, then I, I had an idea. I'd went to live in Holland for a couple of years, and um, that was that was in two thousand eight. Probably not a good time to go there when the, you know, recession was on in the world. But yeah. I got a job in the um, got a job in the uh, a pack house in Holland, uh -huh. uh, working with a bunch working with a bunch of Polish people, um, living in a house with twenty two other people, which was you know, quite interesting. Um, but yeah, while I was doing that, I'd, when I'd been doing my property, I'd picked up um, tapes by, um, there was Pat Mercedes, put out a whole lot, and he was sending, um, I joined one of his monthly things where he'd interview people or he would send out tapes of other people. Um, so there's, um, yeah, there's Brian Tracy and Jack Can uh, Cansfield and maybe a Tony Robbins, I, yeah, I bought a Tony Robbins program at one stage. Um, what's that one? The Power. I can't remember what it is. Um, and then the Edge, I bought that one as well. Yeah, you I never went to any of the Personal Power 2. Is that, is that the one you're talking about, Personal Power 2? Yeah, ah. Personal Power 2. Um, and then, then I didn't get all the way through that. Um, I started and I didn't get through it. And then I thought, he brought out the edge which says you can do it in seven days i thought well that's much better i can do it in seven days um, but um yeah I, I played with that a bit and then when i was in holland i'd actually well, i'd seen the secret and a friend of mine had got um a program was it the science of getting rich mm -hmm. which was put out by bob proctor jack yeah. Can, uh, cansfield and michael beckworth so Michael Bigworth introduced it. Bob Proctor went through the, the book and then Jack Canfield did uh, did a few questions and a summary at the end. So while I was in Holland, I was studying that. I'd get up every morning and go through it and listen to it and study it and plug it in at, at work sometimes. And um, I got on, then I got on to, I went to a pitch fest in London and signed up to a program it was wasn't at the pitch fest. I signed up for something, and that led on to something else. Got onto someone else's mailing list, and then um, ended up in a program that was promoting um, internet marketing. Um, and I got involved in that, and I was doing that for. I was in that for about seven years, 
and that leads me up to about um, six months ago. Um, but the last five years of that, I was doing, um, I'd, I'd created a group in, in New Zealand, which is for, what well, was for Down Under people, which is Australians and New Zealanders. And I would, when people joined up to this internet marketing program, I would, you know, have a, get a hold of them, have a chat to them, find out how they were doing or where they needed help uh, and all that sort of stuff. And then I was also running calls every, um, Thursday night so that well, because this this company was based in originally in the UK and then um, in the States it didn't wasn't conducive to our time zone so we didn't get a lot of support down here mm -hmm. and that was that was the main reason I set up the group so that we could connect with each other we could help each other out and um, although it got to a stage where I wasn't wasn't really connected with that program I didn't didn't like exactly what they're doing it just sit, didn't sit comfortable with me so I wasn't promoting it I did promote it early on but I wasn't promoting it later on and then um, there was more people running there and more people got involved in it so um, my calls on a Thursday night weren't getting much action so I sort of canned that um, but you know in the meantime while I was running those I was back engineering um, in Christchurch. It was, wasn't a bad job. Um, they were sending me, I got to China. Mm -hmm. I got to the States a couple of times. Um, you know, and, and these trips were like for four weeks. Four, four weeks in China. I did six weeks in the States. Another four weeks in the States. I did um, probably six weeks in Australia. Plus I did some other smaller trips to Australia for servicing jobs, like for a week and come back so I was getting the travel and I was getting around a bit but um, they the, the, the attitude was quite negative um, yeah. it, was, it was actually a strange place to work I mean mm, most people I mean most companies you, you know you get a feel for it and, and a lot of them are the same but this one was was strange there didn't seem to be any accountability people seem to do what they like um, so yeah just and the last trip I went to Adelaide, they just um, annoyed me a great deal, and um, I come back. I'd actually signed up to watch um, the Paradigm Shift, which is a Bob Proctor program. Mm -hmm. you know, bearing in mind that I've been listening to, I've been on his email list for years, and I would see his um, emails come through promoting this course and that course and another course, and then I'm on Jack Cansfield's um, emailing list as well, and a number of others. Um, but I decided that I seem to, you know, always come across a barrier. I mean, I would decide to to do something and, and move forward in life, but all of a sudden I'd be best back doing what I'm doing, not making progress. Like, you know, I, I also tried um, multi-level marketing at one stage, mm -hmm. and I got to a stage where I was getting my product for free and I was getting product for my mum for free as well. So, you know, I wasn't doing too bad at it, but I wasn't making great sums of money. Um, but, you know, it was hard work. It's not promoting to your friends and family is, mm -hmm. is what they recommend, but it's not what I like doing because if I want them to still be my friends mm. and you start promoting this stuff, yeah, yeah you, you want to buy this. It, yeah, so a lot of people understand where I'm coming from on that one because you probably dabbled with it yourselves and yeah. have been in the same situation and uh, you know it's hard work and, and that's that was another reason I got into the internet side of it because you can promote stuff and um, and you've got you know the world is your as your market basically because you can like um, do calls like this whereas I'm in I'm in New Zealand and uh, Robert's in the UK um, half a world apart yet we're still having a uh, having a conversation and you know we've had chats before we just get online and have a talk and you're talking face to face yeah. it's like being in the same room but incredible you're not world. you're still a world apart yeah, yeah it's an incredible world yeah so um you know 20 years ago you couldn't do this um so yeah, that, that's that's a good thing but anyway getting back to where i was i you know i had been to they sent me to adelaide um i'd done something like i was over there for i think it was nine days 
and I did about 90 hours in those nine days. Wow. The first, when I flew out, and they, the, the other thing was they let me know at two o'clock on a Friday that I was flying out at six o'clock on Saturday morning, so mm -hmm. short notice. That didn't have didn't matter too much to me. Um, I can do that sort of thing. And then, you know, that first day I was up for 26 and a half hours straight, um, you know, with flying time and travel and then getting the job done. But And then when I was, they were booking my tickets to come back, they says, oh, and I'd done about 72 hours when they were looking at booking tickets. So, well, would you like to come back on Monday morning or Monday afternoon? And I said, oh, Tuesday morning would be good. So then I can have a day to look around Adelaide. And they come back and says, well, um, you have to pay for the hotel and the rental car for the extra day if you want to do that. I thought, oh, forget it. I'll just come back. Um, and that, that was one of the things that triggered me. Mm -hmm. I was also supposed to be on, as I said, the live streaming for the Paradigm Shift with Bob Proctor, which was run in LA over that week, uh, one of the weekends I was there, so I missed that. Yeah. When I got, when I got back, I actually decided, because you got access to the recording for two weeks, so I sat down and started watching the recording, the first session. They talked about making a decision, and... I'm not sure whether they talked about the making of the decision first or they talked about the opportunity to get into um, into becoming a consultant for you know promoting one of their programs and actually using it to create your own business as a consultant. Um, I'm not sure which way it went round, whether the whether the decision was first or the consulting thing was mentioned first, but I then made the decision. Um, yep, I'm I'm out of engineering. I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to get into the consulting. So um, I filled in the form. I, they gave me a call the next day when I was at work. And I said, well, it's probably not a good time I'm at work. And I, you know, I'm one, to, I'm a believer in, well, the boss is paying me for my time. If I'm talking about my own stuff and my and his time, well, it's, it's ripping the boss off. Mm -hmm. so I says, oh, give me a call back. I'll, get up five o'clock tomorrow morning and we can have a chat. So yeah, next morning I got a chat um, and I says, oh, well, I'm, I'm definitely in, but I want to finish going through this course first so that, you know, I get full benefit because if I sign up to a new program, I'm not going to get the benefit because I'll, I'll stop doing this and I'll get on to the new stuff. So it's, he said, yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. On the Friday, they, they annoyed me even some more and I just, while I was at work, I just text the guy. I says, um, "I'm in," um, and we had a call the following morning, and uh, I signed up. Um, and on the over the weekend, I started writing out my resignation, and I sent it in on the Tuesday. Gave four weeks' notice. Um, yeah, and that means I finished in August. Since then, I've um, yeah, started my own business, and I've been to uh, Canada to do some training, and I'm getting right into it. Brilliant. And what, what, what was, what's the difference so far between being involved in the area of business you are now, personal development, and all of the other personal, Um, Well, with the personal development, it's what they, what they teach you is um, what holds you back is your paradigms. So, and, and, you know, your paradigms are a bunch of the habits, the, a multitude of habits that control... 95% of what you do um, every day. And that's why, you know, you find there's a lot of people out there that have got, you know, they've got university degrees. Um, some have got two, or th I've, I've seen people with two or three university degrees, but yet they're still broke. Mm. They've got a lot of knowledge, but they're not utilizing it and, and turning it into money. Mm. And that comes down to, you know what you know and what you do are two different things yeah. you know like salesmen they know how to make sales and they know if they they get out there they can they can make a really good income but they do just enough because they have a paradigm say i mean it might be that their limit for you know their earning um ceiling is a hundred thousand dollars a year yeah so they do just enough to get to the hundred thousand dollars a year 
and even though they know how to do more and they have the capability of going to doing two or three hundred thousand dollars a year because they've got this paradigm in the head i mean it's in their subconscious that that actually controls where they are and you know they might have a really good month and and do um do 30 or 40 grand in the month but then the following few months they their, their paradigm kicks in and says well you're earning too much now you need to come back down and to be on the on the path for your hundred thousand dollars a year it's a false level and false ceiling of expectation yeah, yeah definitely a yeah. lot of people suffer with it. and that, that's that's controlled by your paradigms and um you know it's just like and and you start picking up your paradigms from like when you're born because yeah. it's you know, how you're taught when you're growing up you're taught you know, get a good education, get a job, and you know that gives you security for the rest of your life. Yeah, it doesn't actually teach you how to make money. To to make money, you need to have multiple sources of income. Mm. Or, and another thing to to um, develop your income is to be doing something that is that is uh, is lots of people need it. Mm. The second thing is your ability to do it. And the third thing is how replaceable are you? And if you're, you know, easily re easily replaced, you're not going to get as much money as someone that's very difficult to be replaced. And you can look at it in, in any industry. If you've got something that's in demand, you can do it really well, and you're not replaceable, then you can earn a higher income. Yeah, interesting. You should mention not replaceable. That's what I love about. Uh, this industry teaching yeah. in general is the fact that I think I, I alluded to I, I replied to you on a video do you remember uh, yeah and basically yeah. said that you know it's it doesn't matter if if somebody's telling you a story or giving you some information that you've heard before if it inspires you to take action this time because it's delivered in a different way with a different voice um, the diff, maybe a different level of enthusiasm, whatever it is that gets you inspired enough to actually take action where last time you heard it, you didn't. And that's, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. We've all got a different voice. There is only so much information. There are only so many universal laws. They all work the same way. And, and a lot of people know yeah. this information. But, but one person could listen to the same story from two people and get it from one and not get it from the other. And that's the that, this, and that makes you irreplaceable. Yeah, but they can also listen to the same person <laughs> twice and hear two different things because, yeah. again, it is where you're at when you're listening to it. Um, yeah. I, I'm not sure what book it is. I've heard it said before: when the um, student is ready, the teacher will appear. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I've also heard another one. You can be listening to a webinar or a seminar or a speech or something and you're, you're, you're going along and you're listening and then a thought will come into your head yeah. and you're off, off on a tangent somewhere. Yeah. And then for the next five minutes, you're, you're off um, in your own mind doing something else. Yeah, and in that five minutes that the, 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 the person is talking, you haven't taken anything in. Yeah. Then, you, then you suddenly you, you get back off that thought that you were on and you get back to the to this and he yeah. said carries up and you start listening again and it can go along like this all yeah. the way along yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. that way i mean if you listen to a replay of the of that same exact same webinar or recording um you'll get something different out of it every time because it's it all comes down to your perception or your perspective as you're listening to it and where you're at yeah, definitely. I, I, I have to say, I can, I can, I can think of times when, um, away from this subject, actually, when that's happened to me specifically, watching the Pink Pink Panther films, and uh, and then the airplane films. There's always something that you missed last time that will make you giggle this time. That is happening in the background somewhere. So, yeah, is absolutely true. I was interested as you were talking though, and listening to your background and some of the drivers that appear, appear to be going on. A lot of the work I do is similar to, to a lot of the work that, um, that you're going through right now with Bob. Um, yeah, yeah. In the fact that I'm exact, I don't use the word paradigm so much, um, but it's essentially, it's the same conversation. It is true. Yeah. 
We're born into this world with a purpose. We're born into this world with a unique purpose. We are a unique person. We've never existed yeah. before. We'll never exist again. We go through yeah. childhood, adolescence, into young adulthood, and we're taking on all these external influences from parents, peers, yeah. siblings, all this sort of stuff. And what happens yeah. over time, it comes in and we adopt it as our own belief system. Yeah. Truth of the matter is that later on in life, you realize that you've been living your life according to somebody else's rules, living their life experience, but in your skin, exactly. which doesn't figure, does it? Any which way you look at it. So yeah. that, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of seeing that kind of thing going on a little bit with you early doors as well, as you're telling your story, because the one interesting factor I noticed is that most of the things you were doing were, um, were coming from an ego driven, and I say ego in terms of physical pressure physical world external world pressure to deliver money and to perform yeah. and to come up to expectations right yeah. as most of us we, we we all go through this but the the fascinating thing was that you for some apparent reason kept reaching out for personal development you kept touching personal development without ever really it would appear thinking of it as an avenue to actually taking care of the financial side for you it was a calling. And I would argue, or I would suggest, not argue, I would suggest that that was the struggle between the 10% conscious, conscious logical thinking mind and the 90% subconscious, which is the biggest part of you, the part of you that is you, not the person you're trying to be. And they're having this kind of thing where you, there's a conflict going on. And so it's no accident in my mind that you've ended up finally in personal development but doing it in such a way now that it's going to take care of the financial side as well. And also some of the things that you were saying about the things you've been involved in uh, and the way they conflict with your core values of maybe not giving the value they should be giving for the money they're taking. It's, it's a hor We've all been in situations in life where we go through um, businesses or we're involved in jobs, early doors, where we feel we're taking from people more than we're actually giving and it's not a great feeling yeah. it's almost like robbing from yourself yeah. as well because we're all connected we're only yeah. separate because we perceive it that way but we're all connected so to steal from your brother is to steal from yourself and it's th th there's that kind of intuitive knowing that spiritual knowing on another conscious level you know that's what's going on so the fact that you're where you are now and looking so happy tells me yeah. that you kind of migrated from that stage of life now to a higher consciousness. And it, yeah. to, to me, it sounds as if all the ends are finally starting to meet for you, where you're getting the financial side coming into place, but you're doing it knowing you're making a difference. I mean, am I close to the, the point here with that? Yeah, yeah. well... I'm, um, it's interesting because I, I've been interested in the consulting program for, I mean, the consulting side of it for a while. I just thought I can't do it because how can I teach something that I haven't done myself? Mm. And they answered that question for me and saying, well, you start, I mean, you come into the program, you start doing the training. And as long as you're two or three steps ahead of, of the people that you're, you're helping, and you're probably more because, you know, I, I've been reading and, and listening to all this sort of stuff for, you know, like probably 18 years now. So it's in there. Yeah. And I know it. It's just now I, I just share it with people. Yeah. And, in, and in fact, when I, when I told people at work that I was leaving and they said, oh, so what are you going to do? I said, oh, I'm going to be a consultant. What in engineering? I says, no, 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 something different. I'm, I'm going into personal development, and they look at you a bit funny. And I talked to some of them, and, and there was one guy. Um, I, I've been away on a few trips with him. Um, he's been doing it for ten years, and his girlfriend just had a baby. So I'd heard, I'd, I'd been recommended a book on um, how to improve your baby's intelligence. So I went out and bought it, and I. I just gave him the book. I says, you might want to read this, Johnny. It's, um, 
it might help you know you, you've got a new kid now it's a new whole new world for you um start now and and you can develop your your, your new daughter um, yeah. so he was reading it and he was coming back oh this is good stuff and again he and it, it's something he hasn't he's never been exposed to yeah so then i um I was called in before I went to my training course in, in the, uh, Canada. I, I popped in at work again just to say hi and how things are going. And I dropped him off another book to read. Um, and so he was going to take that and he was off to um, the States to do some work. So he's going to read that on the plane. You know, you got a bit of time on the plane when, you, when you're flying around the world. Yeah. Um, and, you know, after a bit, you get to see a lot of the movies. So, yeah. But anyway, he was reading that, and then there was there was a couple other guys that I'd been um, I shared some information with, and um, two of them, well, they sort of listened to it, but I think um, part of it that that's still like in the early twenties. So um, how much they are actually interested? It's one of them was saying, well, you know, it's, it helped them at work because he's a guy that that likes talking and socializing with people which sometimes the bosses don't really like um and he then gets the idea that they're picking on him so you know one of the one of the tapes i gave him was on attitude so he then starts to understand how um your attitude can affect things so you and talking about reacting and responding yeah. so if someone says something to you you automatically go <coughs> and, and respond i mean and react which is not the way to do it if you just stop and think and then and think about it and then you say well what should i say back or sometimes you just hold your tongue and say nothing um, and then they're not getting the reaction they want so it doesn't go down the same so yeah but yeah there's, there's one guy he's actually taken what i'm what i'm what i've given him and he's actually written out some goals and um I think this weekend he's, he's bought himself some camera gear and he's going to start shooting because um, he's interested in in cars and there's a car show around where he lives. So he's going to be shooting yeah. videos at the car show and working on, you know, the job he's doing now is just paying his income until he grows a business and, and starts heading for his goals. So yeah. you know, sharing that sort of stuff is, you know, I enjoy that. And it's something that I, you know, over the last five years running running the calls I was running, I was, you know, getting one on one calls and helping people. Yeah. And it I was doing it for nothing. Um, I didn't get anything out of it at, other than personal satisfaction and, yeah. and the the knowing that you were helping people. Exactly. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? And the rest yeah. comes as a matter of course. And I yeah. think that's that's where I see in, in a lot of people a, a dramatic focus change, especially as they you know, as their physical age progresses, as you get older, you start yeah, to you get older and wiser. Yeah, yeah, you do, yeah. and, and you, you become yeah. less attached to financial wealth, um, less attached to to uh, fancy cars and big houses and everything. It's it's a byproduct. It's it's not important. It becomes no. more important to 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 give value and the way you feel about yourself inside. Because yeah. the thing is that we're all we're all only here to really to be happy. That's got to be the goal for everybody, to be happy. If you're not happy, what's, yeah. what's the point? Well, the only way you can ever be happy is if you get to a place where you feel good. So find out what makes you feel good and do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. That's what you're now doing. But yeah. it's, it can be a long search for people and a long struggle between ego-driven stuff and, and the spiritual calling before they finally come to a place where they realize this and have the strength to, to, to follow it. Yeah. So, uh, I, uh, but I, I also think, well, you know, ha happiness is, is a state of mind. Um, you know, a lot of people, just by the sheer fact that they complain all the time, they're not going to be happy. It's just how you, how you look at things. And yeah. I mean, when I was working in my job, I was always, you know, quite happy. And I, because I, I went with the attitude, well, mm -hmm. um, I'm spending at least eight hours a day here, which is a you know, a third of my life, I mean, a third of my day, Yeah. I spend, you know, I've got six or seven hours in bed sleeping. So that means half of my awake time, if I'm at work and I'm not happy, 
there's there's half of my life ruined because I'm at a, at a job. And so I, I just took the attitude and I would, you know, people would walk past, oh, how's it going, uh, Johnny? How's it going, Michael? And and, yeah. and then the, the really fun thing I used to do was on a Monday morning, you go into work and you go, yay, it's Monday. Yeah. And people go. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What a great place to be, though. Yeah, the and, and, to get everybody like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's what I'm working on now. Ch change, change the way you think. You change the way uh, the way you feel, and you change the way you act. It's all and, about internal communication, isn't it? That's why two people can be faced with the same set of circumstances and have an entirely different reaction to it. It's got nothing yeah. to do with the circumstances. Entirely the way they're wi wired in here and the meanings they attach to everything. I agree with you, hundred yeah. percent. Listen, um, we've, we've we've got a limited amount of time together. I could go on all day, but uh, yeah. Before I wrap up, um, where can people go to find out more about you, Robbie, and more about what you're doing with the Bob Proctor program? Well, you can contact me on Facebook, which is Robbie J. Von Wout, um, or you can. I have my email address is Robbie at RobbieVonWout dot com. Um, we can probably put a link under the video. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because as you say, um, I can say my name, but whether you can spell it or not is another matter. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll try and do better next time. <laughs> um, I, I also have a, um, a Facebook page, which is the I mean, Down Under Mastermind group. Um, so if you look down under mastermind group, um, you'll see the, the little symbol of it's got the Australian and New Zealand map with the, with their prospective flags on the, on the, on the map in the corner. So you can find me that way. It's probably easier than trying to spell my name. Cool. Cool. And I, I would recommend that you, um, you reach out to Robbie and have a chat. I mean, the, the nice thing about Robbie, He's easily accessible. He's happy to talk. Um, yeah. He's just open. And, and it's a rare thing these days to find people who are happy to pick up a telephone and talk. So if you're in a situation where you feel you can find out more about Robbie, what he's doing with the Bot Proctor program, get in touch. And he'll be more than happy to spend some yeah. time with you. And, um, yeah. And, and, and I'll do I, I can talk to you. Yeah. You, don't, you don't even have to buy off me. It doesn't worry me. That's that's a good thing. I mean, there's no. I was gonna. I, do you know what? I was gonna actually. I was just gonna say that, but couldn't think of a way of putting it. But that's about it. It's it's really just an yeah. informal chat. He's not gonna try and sell you anything. He's not gonna talk to you. I mean, listen. In life, we learn as. I, well. I, ju I just want to help you out. Yeah, that's it. That's it. He just wants to help you out. And and let's be honest. In life. We don't sell anybody anything. We just encourage them or help them to buy what they already want. And if they don't want it, they don't want it. Yeah. It's as simple as that. So you've got yeah. Robbie's links. Go along, visit um, visit Robbie, get connected there. Um, you know by now, if you're a regular visit, uh, visitor to Coffee with Robert, you know what I'm all about. Um, if you haven't already been onto my webinar where I discuss the six obstacles that are perhaps stopping you, from creating the life and business that you want for yourself right now, then you need to get along to robertcbrown.online forward slash webinar. That's robertcbrown.online forward slash webinar. By the way, the good news is I don't just discuss the six obstacles. I'm going to give you six fixes for that as well. So you can leave the webinar with an actionable plan to start moving your life and your business in the right direction and fast. So get along there as well. I'd love to see you there. Keep checking out the coffee with Roberts. And uh, I love having you here. Robbie, do you want to do you want to chat in? And he, he's, he's not a bad guy. <laughs> I've been talking to him a few times now. <laughs> yeah, you're making me blush. You're making me blush. <laughs> Robbie, it's been a real pleasure to have you. And what was it? Sorry? No worries. No, it's been... It's been said, no, and, no. And, and no, we're expecting... We, we're for anybody who's wondering what's going on here, we've got a wonderful delay between the UK and New Zealand here today, which makes things a little bit challenging. It's such a long way. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, even travelling at the speed of light. It, 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 yeah, that's right. But it, it works better than carrier pigeon, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Robbie, thanks so much. I know it's late where you are. Thanks so much for spending the time with me today. I know people will get a lot of value from it. And um, let's stay in contact, yeah. my friend. 
I'm going to watch your progress with keen yeah, interest, right. and, I, and I hope you stay connected with me too. And maybe we'll do this again down the line. Oh, definitely. Where everybody is. Yep. Glad to help. Really. Glad to be on the call. All right, mate. Lovely, lovely to have you here, and I'll speak to you very, very soon. Have, have a great day. And thanks to every, yep. everybody for being here today. And check out the next coffee for, with Robert, and I'll see you very, very soon. Cheers now. Bye bye.